All right, y'all. What's good? Welcome to another episode of Buzz Boys. And I mean, get straight into it. Another collapse. You know, this is a collapse, and we we've seen the Hornets have massive scoring droughts, but none of them have really came in the fourth quarter of a game that we were in control of. So this is really the first one of that nature where, you know, we're up, I believe, nine. We're up nine. <sighs> Flagrant foul happens, two shots, three. So that's like a five-point swing. Then they come back down hit another three. And it was like just like an eight-point swing in like 30 seconds to where it just kind of deflated us completely. And um, from that point, that's really where I don't know what the fuck happened, but we go on a six minute, seven minute scoring drought. Um, and yet again, it's just kind of like you look at Borrego, like, bro, what the fuck are you doing? I mean, I don't give a fuck if my players are missing, bro. I'm calling timeouts, I'm subbing somebody out, I'm doing something. I mean, why are we watching Kelly Oubre ISO? What are we doing? What are we doing? Martin's out there just running around. What are we doing? It's like, bro, Borrego just has no problem watching players not impact the game. And I, I didn't, for me, I can't do that shit, bro. Once I see a player is literally not having any effect on the game, bro, like, they're getting scored on, and then they're not coming down and scoring. They can't do shit. You know what I'm saying? If you have three points, and then 10 minutes later, you still have three points, you're not helping. Okay? That's just what it is. That's the reality. You know, like, bro, we need players that are going to impact the game. And when they're not, go sit down. Like, Borrego just gives these players free reign, bro, and just watches these niggas play like shit. With little to no consequence. Like, bro. I don't give a fuck, bro. If you're not playing well, bro, go sit down. I don't care. And it's like, bro, we're watching Terry Rozier. And he did have a spurt, like, like in the early to mid-fourth quarter where he was making plays. And then, I don't know, shit fell apart for the whole team. But, you know, Terry's been struggling. I mean, even this game, he has 17 points on 22 shots. And it's like, damn, like, how long do we just wait for it? I mean, he's only played five games. This is his fifth game play. You know, maybe six, if you want to count. But, like, I think this is his fifth. I don't know. But, like, at what point do we kind of diminish his role a little bit? Because, I mean, he's playing 35, like, basically 35 minutes, getting up. Damn near 20 shots a game. His splits are terrible. And it's like, at what point is just like, you kind of got to find your rhythm on your own. I mean, it's like, he he's having the ball a lot. And he doesn't pass, really. Not like that. It's just like, bro, if he's not scoring, ah, at least with Cody Martin, it's like, okay, you can say, oh, uh, defense, defense, defense. Even though Cody Martin began getting cooked, too. Luke Kennard was hitting threes. Cody Martin was late closing out. He wasn't there, literally just standing around. I mean, and sometimes, I'm not going to lie, players get a reputation as a defensive player, and it's kind of like, bro, there'll be times when them niggas are not playing defense. They're not. And it's like, it just gets swept under the rug, or like it gets ignored because you, like, trust that guy. But, I mean, there was plenty of times tonight where, like, Cody Martin either was not guarding anybody or closing out way too late and it's just like bro if you're out here getting three splash in your face what the fuck are you out there for because he's not a scorer so it's like bro if you playing 30 minutes and you're not getting double digits bro i don't need you out there not for 30 minutes like, i'm not saying that cody martin is not need to be in the rotation because i think that he does and i think that his perimeter defense is something that should be appreciated and some that like he needs to play but it's just 30 minutes I don't know. I don't know about that. I feel like whatever Cody Martin's going to do in 18, 19 minutes, that's what he's going to do, period. Like, I mean, I'm saying, like, bro, 
give Cody Martin like 20 minutes. Give Book Knight like 10. Let's see what Book Knight does with those 10 minutes. Because it's going to come a time where we're going to need some other option scoring wise to try to prevent these scoring droughts because it keeps coming up. And I mean, we're having players heavily in our rotation who like, they're not scoring the ball. Plumlee has barely even gotten over five points in I don't know how many games. Let's see. Let's see what the fuck this nigga's done. And bro, I literally said on Twitter earlier today when he was questionable to play, I'm like, oh my God, his, his four points and four rebounds will be missed. Oh my God. He has 2.6 rebounds. He has four assists, but I'm pretty sure he had like four or five turnovers. Let's see. Oh, show turnovers. It does show the fucking turnovers. I know he had four, though. I counted four. But, like, Plumlee has two points. He's one for two. So, it's like, he doesn't even shoot the ball. I mean, against the Kings, he was two for two. One for two. O oh for one. I'm just reading his games right here. Two for seven, three for seven are the most he shot. Oh, no. Six for eight and five for nine against the Magic and the Celtics. And, uh, I mean, those were his best games. He had 14 and 10, 12 and 11. And, I mean, man, that's what he needs to be doing. Back somebody down the post and, and do a fucking hook shot or some shit. I don't fucking know. But it's like, he just out there. He's not a factor on offense. He turned the ball over trying to pass. I mean, he had four assists, but, like, he turned the ball over trying to pass. It's just, oh, my God, man. It's just, what the fuck? Like, what is he out there for, bro? I can't take this shit, man. Like, nigga. I mean, Nick Richards, like, he wasn't playing too bad. I don't understand why he only got first half play. Like, Nick Richards had 13, I mean, 13 minutes. He had six points, two rebounds. Nothing crazy, but, I mean, he was getting in the post and getting dunks. Like, shit. <laughs> he, out, he outscored Plumlee in half the time. Shit. I don't fucking know, dude. I don't know. There's a lot of things that I don't understand what Borrego does or his thought process in doing it. I don't know why Jalen McDaniels has been benched. He was giving us a consistent 13 to 15 points. He He's on the bench. He, he gets zero minutes now. I don't fucking know. I don't understand anything Borrego does. But, I mean, there were some bright spots tonight. LaMelo played good offensively. Only downside, the foul trouble is continuing. It's becoming a trend for LaMelo. And um, I'm not quite sure how you break it, but it's getting it's getting bad. I mean, it's like every single game, you can kind of expect, you know, around halftime, LaMelo's going to have two to three fouls. Um, he finished with five tonight. He did get one overturned. So, I mean, he really could have had, see, he really could have fouled out. But, I mean, I don't really know how to stop that. I mean, stop reaching, period. Like, don't do it. Just stop reaching. Just, if you get the steal in the passing lane, cool. But on the ball, just stop reaching. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, because you want him to remain aggressive defensively. But, I mean, the fouls, it's got to stop because he can't close the first half and that also is a reason for the scoring droughts without LaMelo nigga eh. and I mean Ish Smith only played five minutes tonight he didn't really get too much too much playing time tonight excuse me excuse me it's midnight man and daylight saving time so like it's really like 1am but um yeah <sighs> I don't know, man. I wish I had some type of quick fix and answer to prevent these scoring droughts. Because that's really what's killing us. It's, it's what's killing us. And, I mean, we've had we had good plays tonight. Like, that lob from Rozier to Miles coming off the screen at the top. It's like, bro, those are the plays that we need. Those are energetic plays that should get everybody going. And, I mean, there's plenty of times tonight where it seemed like we were building momentum, coming down, hitting threes. You know, Cody Martin had a three in the corner. Um, 
where it just seemed like it was a spark and everybody was energized. And then that goes for a couple minutes and that shit kind of subsides. And then the half court starts, you know, the half court just kind of starts to fall apart. And I mean, I'm looking at it right now. The Clippers quarters, 31, 30, 28, 31. They basically score 30 every quarter. We go 40, well, you know, 39, 19, 29, 19. It's crazy they all end in nines. But, like, you have two quarters where you don't even score 20 points. You're not finna fucking win in the NBA doing that shit, bro. Second quarter, 19 points. Fourth quarter, 19 points. You're not winning any NBA game scoring 19 points in the fourth quarter, bro. And this is shit where it's like, bro, what needs to be done? Lineup changes anything, man. I'm open to anything because it's like we need to find... We need to find our closing unit now than later in the season where we still don't know who we can trust on the court to close out a game. And, you know, last year, a lot of times it was Terry. And, I mean, he did, you know, kind of have a spark in the fourth a little bit. But, you know, yeah. we can't depend We can't depend on him. Right now, he's inconsistent. So, if he's having a bad game, what the fuck do we do? And I really don't like Kelly Oubre being out there to close games just because he can't shoot. His shot is very hit and miss. It's very, it's very inconsistent. You know, it's like Kelly Oubre will hit three, three threes in a row and then miss his next five in a row. Like, I mean, uh, okay, 10% low battery. Go ahead and wrap this up. But, I mean, Kelly Oubre is shooting 34% from three right now. Um... Averaging 12 and a half points. Um, I mean, tonight he has 16. He's 7 for 14 from the field, which is pretty good. It's 50%. But he's 1 for 6 from 3. You know, against the Kings, he's 1 for 5 from 3. Warriors, 0 for 3. Cavs, 0 for 3. The Trailblazers, where he went 6 and 11. And the Celtics, where he went 5 for 10 is the only reason why his numbers are even at 34. Without those games and him being, at, like, higher, bro, his shit would be way worse. Magic 0 for 5. Nets 1 for 5. He's had multiple games where he shoots 20% or worse. What the fuck? Stop letting him shoot. Stop passing him the fucking ball on the perimeter, bro. And the thing is... On all these shots, he'd be open on most of them. He'd be fucking open. The defense lets him have that shot. He fucking misses that bitch. Every now and then, he gets lucky and makes a shot in the corner. Other than that, bro, he clanks that bitch, bro. And for me, when it comes to Ubre, I'm not going to say I don't want him out there because we need sparks off the bench. But the thing is, he's at his best when he's getting to the fucking bucket, bro. Like, stop shooting them three. The defense is giving you that shit for a reason. And if you're not going to make them pay for it, put your head down, build up some momentum, try to fucking dunk on somebody. Even if you don't dunk, you're going to the free throw line. Like, bro, that's where you're going to make your bread and butter, bro. Attacking the basket with your athleticism, bro. I mean, look at Cody Martin, bro. I mean, not to say that they're the same player, but, I mean, he doesn't try to jack up threes. Now, don't get me wrong. He has improved his three-point shot this year. But Cody Martin has no problem putting his head down and just going to the basket instead. Or just passing the fucking ball. But, you know, he takes what he can get, man. He 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 understands his game. That is one thing I can say about Cody Martin. He understands his game. Cody Martin doesn't jack up errant shots. He doesn't. I mean, he was two for seven tonight. He's two for three from three, though. He You know, he catches, shoots, gets his little shots up. That's it. He's not shooting six, seven, eight threes a game. Because we don't need that shit. I mean, look, I'm looking at Cody Martin's shit. No threes. 0 for 1. 1 for 1. 0 for 1. 2 for 4. Four threes the most he shot all year. He made two. He takes his shots here and there when the defense gives it to him in the flow of the offense. That's about it. You know, it's like, bro, Kelly will take a fucking three pointer on a fast break if he if he like and I don't know why his light is this green light, bro. 
this nigga can't fucking shoot, bro. He can't. And I mean, Hayward... I mean, Hayward just disappears at times, man. But sometimes, you know, when we are having a drops, like Hayward would be the only person that's fucking scoring. It's just like, it's just so up and down. So, it's just so flip flop with almost everybody, it seems like. Everybody either playing pretty good or they're fucking ass. There's no in between. Like, I don't know. Hayward with these fucking turnaround post shots. When he makes them, you're like, oh, oh shit. But when he's missing them, it's just like, bro, why the fuck are you playing like this? Why are you even playing with this style? And I mean, I, I'm somebody who still, I don't know if Gordon Hayward fits this team. As far as style of play, I mean, it's just like, he just seems to always slow the game down a lot. And, um, you know, slow possessions that don't result in points usually come back to bite you. You know, when Gordon is doing these low post fadeaways and shit, like, when he misses, it's like, nigga, what the fuck? Why are you taking that fucking shot? I'm like, you're some type of seven-footer or some shit, for real. I mean, he got two and ones tonight off that shit, like, in the low post, but it's sometimes where it's just like, bro, what the fuck? But I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I wish I had some type of answer for the scoring droughts. I really do. Um, I mean... All I can say is try to play Book Knight, try to play McDaniels to generate some offense. I mean, and if you're Borrego, you got to call timeouts, man. Stop letting shit get out of hand. That's the thing with Borrego. Don't let shit get out of hand, bro. There's no reason to go seven minutes without scoring. Because after two or three minutes, you should be calling the timeout, drawing up plays, doing something. Drop this play. All right, if that play don't work the next time down, do this play. I don't think Borrego does that. And somebody had just tweeted that shit too. Like, does Borrego draw up plays? And um, I was like, I don't think so, bro. I mean, because there's been plenty of times where it's just like, we don't know what the fuck we're doing in the half court. And most of the time it looks like that we have no direction from our coach. Even in late game scenarios, it's just kind of like swing the ball and just hope for the best. That's not going to cut it. Now, I'm going to cut it short because my, my phone is probably about to die soon. Thank y'all for watching. Thank y'all for listening. You know, to my rant. It's fucking midnight. Um, we have the Lakers next, and uh, I mean, right now this this game drops us to below five hundred. The Hornets are now five and six, and uh, with two games left on the road trip, you, you kind of just want to come out above five hundred. But that's gonna require beating the Lakers tomorrow. Well, yeah, tomorrow night we have a back to back, so. Well, today, you know, it's past midnight. So, today, you beat the, you know, again, in Staples Center. You got to try to beat the Lakers. And then, um, I think they are without LeBron. They might be without LeBron. I'm pretty sure that they're going to be without LeBron. But then you got to play the, the Grizzlies. So, I mean, you got to get a win. We, we have no wins on this road trip. And we cannot go 0 for 5 on this road trip, bro. I mean, damn, man. Like, we, we really can't. But we really might, <laughs> which is really terrible. Because, I mean, like, that Kings game was supposed to be the gimme. We got blown the fuck out. I mean, I feel like the Warriors in the Kings game were the first two of the most winnable games. And we smoked that shit, bro. So, this shit can get ugly quick, man, if we don't get on the right path. But like I said, I'm wrap this up, man. Phone's probably about to die. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Like, comment, subscribe. Um, and look, if you're listening to this um, podcast, um, leave a reply under the tweet. Let me know what you think you can, you know, we can do to stop the scoring droughts. If you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and comment. What do you think we can do to stop these scoring droughts? Please give me some answers, man. I'm out for tonight, man. Peace.